Welcome everyone to Dead Talk Live, and tonight we are being joined by one of the co-founders of Legion M, Jeff Anderson. Now, uh, Paul was supposed to be with us as well, Jeff's partner, Paul Scanlon, but he could not make it, so we are we're stuck with jeff tonight but you're that, stuck with me although stuck like with i jeff. said i'm by far the better looking of the two <laughs> so uh, congratulations <laughs> as i was telling you jeff thank you for coming on i'm very excited uh to talk to you and find out more about legion m so the first question that i actually have uh you and jeff you and paul started this in 2016 when it comes to the partnership between you and paul are uh, is one more stronger in the business sense and another one in the creative sense or are both of you equally you know talented in both business and and the creative side uh, that's a great question i uh, you know i mean to be honest paul and i really complement each other well this is the third startup that we've done together uh the first one uh we started up back in 1999 and so you know we've been working together uh, for over 20 years now wow. uh, through, you know, the, the, the first startup that we did was a tech startup, uh, that was very successful. Uh, we, uh, we were the first ones in the world to put live television on a cell phone back in 2003, nice. uh, at a time where, you know, there were little tiny flip phones and the screens were super small. I and remember. most people told us it was a terrible idea. Uh, we literally had big executives telling us this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen nobody is ever going to watch tv on a phone um and today's uh, world yeah well a few years later we ended up winning an emmy award for innovation because we were literally one of the first in the world to do it and today honestly i mean my kids are more likely to watch a movie on their phone than they are <laughs> in a theater which is uh um anyway so you know we've been through that uh which was a lot of ups and downs anytime you're in a in a startup there's all sorts of ups and downs uh and then you know uh we did um a, another startup that was in business for eight years and ended poorly uh you know meaning that you know we were in business for eight years and we you know made a few million dollars in revenue we had people gainfully employed during that time so i mean in the sense of contributing to society uh it did something but it was a startup and it just never achieved escape velocity so we've won together and we've lost together and so you know given the fact that it's been 20 years honestly it's it's kind of like we're an old married couple and and you know to answer your question it's all about like choosing a startup partner is like literally like choosing a life partner you yeah. need someone that complements you you need someone that brings out the best in you and makes you the best person that you are and i think that that's kind of what we do so you know, we both have our own unique strengths and weaknesses but at the end of the day we both uh, you know we're fairly interchangeable <laughs> like an interview like this like honestly uh you probably get would get the same answer if it was him <laughs> so i'm going to explain my uh idea of legion m there are a lot of people okay. who have this question and i want you to jump in afterwards and fill in the blanks All legion right. m is a fan owned production company okay mm -hmm. It's not, a, it's not a public company. It's not traded on the stock market. It is Correct. a private company, but fan contributions are what fund it. Now, beyond that, a lot of people have questions. So how would you describe Legion M to somebody? Yeah, of course. So uh, we're the first fan owned entertainment company. And what that means is that, you know, like, uh, thousands of other entertainment companies. We develop, produce, market, distribute um, film and TV shows. And, you know, you you called us a production company, which I think is probably the most accurate uh, descriptor, but we've actually been involved with every facet of film development and now television uh, or films and now television projects. And so that includes developing new ideas like a traditional production company was trying to package them and sell them. Uh, but we have also in some cases acted as a financier where we're aggregating the money that people have invested in Legion M and turning around and investing in other projects. Uh, we've also acted as a distributor. We partnered with Screen Media a couple of years ago to buy the rights 
to a film that we found at Sundance. Uh, and we're, we own the North American distribution rights for the next 20 years and, wow. and work in that capacity. So it's kind of all spec, all, all, all aspects of the spectrum of entertainment. But what makes us unique is the fact that we're the first one built to be owned by fans. And so what that means is that people invest in the company. So uh, this isn't like Kickstarter where you're backing something, which is a donation in exchange for, um, you know, having your name in the credits or getting a t-shirt or helping make something that you're passionate part of. You're actually an investor in the company, which means that if we're successful, you own equity in the company. And we tell people it's like investing uh, in Disney back when it was just Walt and Roy. You know, if we go on to become successful, you actually own a piece of that. So let's break that down now uh, to deeper levels. Let's talk about the financing part. You said you develop projects. Uh, are you also open to people pitching you scripts? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, well, <laughs> what I should say is this, uh, we definitely are. Um, and, you know, but we have a, a unique challenge um, and opportunity at the same time, which is the fact that we are owned by fans. And yeah. we, we know that there are a lot of people that invest in Legion M, invest because they're passionate about this industry. There's a lot of industry people that invest in Legion M because they love the idea of a fan-owned entertainment company. They yeah. love the idea of, you know, uh, um, a company that's trying to change some of the ways that things are done. And so, you know, we, we don't, for example, um, you know, we can't accept unsolicited scripts, right? And that's pretty standard, like pretty much every uh, production company is like that. And partly for our protection, partly for the production of the people that want to pitch us ideas. Uh, and also partly just because of the sheer magnitude of it. You know, I mean, we we, we have a, a sign up list where people can uh, tell us if they're interested in being alerted when we have, when we have a, um, an open, you know, submission for some project or other. I mean, there's thousands of people on it. And so, you know, if you think of the logistics, we're a small eight person company. And so, you know, to read a script, uh, you know, it takes a few hours. And if you're going to do any sort of analysis or feedback or that sort of thing, uh, it can take, you know, considerably more. And so, you know, we we have to, you know, figure out ways to kind of manage that. So that said, we are, you know, we do uh, talk with uh, or we do receive pitches all the time. Um, you know, if you've got some connection to the company, if you've got uh, an agent or a manager or, you know, honestly, even if you bump into one of us at a Comic-Con, uh, Terry Lubroff is our head of development. She like she is renowned for that and that's the part of the job that she loves we'll go to a comic-con we spend all week in there and you know if you talk to her if you come up to her after a panel or you know hang out with us on a live stream she'll she'll listen to a pitch and you know she's really good at giving honest feedback if this is something that you know we're we'd be interested in then she'll you know take it to the next level. If not, she'll give you, you know, honest feedback and advice as far as like, well, here's what I would suggest, you know, mm -hmm. maybe someplace else you could take it or what would make it uh, interesting for Legion M. Absolutely. Now, uh, you mentioned Kickstarter earlier. Uh, a lot of people confuse Legion M with crowdfunding. Uh, that is absolutely not the case. Am I correct? Well, we are equity crowdfunding like that's the technical name for it so you know whereas kickstarter is what's called rewards based uh, uh crowdfunding and, and gofundme and indiegogo and that sort of stuff and it, it's literally the distinction is whether you can own equity and own stock in the project where there's some opportunity for a financial return and it'll, this is brand new. Like this wasn't even possible until 2016. In fact, yeah. the whole reason that we launched the company was because there were these new disruptive equity crowdfunding laws that were coming along. And we realized that that created like literally a once in a lifetime opportunity because it was changing securities laws that had been on the books since the Great Depression mm -hmm. and, you know, made this possible. So I, I don't know that we can claim to be the first one to have thought of the idea of a fan-owned company, but we happened to be around at the exact moment in time where that became possible. And, you know, we jumped on it and, um, you know, that was 2016. So, you know, almost six years ago. Now you mentioned the SEC. Now I know 
when it comes to equity funding, where you're literally sort of selling a piece of the company, it doesn't have to be on the public market, on, on Wall Street. Uh, there is some SEC oversight. So how do you guys do it? Uh, a fan wants to invest. What kind of uh, equity are they getting? Are they, when a fan invests money, uh, are they investing in a particular project that you guys are advertising or are they investing in the entire company? Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, they are investing in the entire company. Um, so, you know, to use the Disney analogy, you're investing in Walt Disney Corporation, not Snow White, right. uh, you know, their, their first feature film. And the whole reason for that is, you know, the whole reason that Legion M exists is because we believe that when fans unite, we have the power to shape the future of Hollywood. Like if you think about it, every dollar in the entertainment industry comes from people like you and me. Yeah. And it's either from our watching it, the eyeballs that are going to get at the advertising revenue or the dollars out of our pocket that are going to buy the tickets. And so individually, each one of us is just a consumer. But when we unite, we have enormous power. So the, the M in, in, in our logo, I pointed over the wrong shoulder. Uh, <laughs> you can see uh, the M with a bar over it is actually the Roman numeral for 1 million. Wow. And so it's baked into our logo because our long-term goal is to unite 1 million fans as shareholders of the company. Mm -hmm. And what we believe is that if we can do that, first of all, we would have hundreds of millions of dollars to invest in projects and develop projects and all that. But more importantly, we'd have a million people that are emotionally and financially invested in the projects that we do. So and we have a the industry that comes is out and what in the industry is called putting some skin in the game. Yeah, exactly. Well, and it's, it, it's really, I, I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> we, we live in such a unique time in film and television, because if you think about it, it's only been within our lifetimes that content has gone from this, right, where it used to be three channels and movie theaters exactly. to this, where YouTube is producing more content than you could watch probably in a lifetime every single day. Wow. And the number of channels are exploding. And so in this world where literally content is a commodity, it is around, we can pluck it out of the air with our cell phone and watch anything that we want to at any time, right? So it is a pure commodity that's all around us. What's valuable is our attention. Because at the end of the day, we decide what we're going to watch. Yeah. And that determines what succeeds and what fails. And so the idea is, is that if you own a stake in this company called Legion M and they are producing a movie, you're more likely to care about it and, mm -hmm. you know, or at least know about it. And because of the fact that we work really hard to open the gates of Hollywood. And so, you know, when we get in on a movie, we want to bring fans along for the ride and we want to take you on set, you know, uh, sometimes literally on set where we have opportunities for people to come do set visits and that sort of thing. Um, but other times, you know, virtually by doing live streams with the cast and crew and, you know, uh, all the BTS stuff. And so by the time that movie comes out, it's it's our movie and and that is 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 the whole idea behind legion m we believe that if you can unite enough fans like that i mean our long-term goal is a million but even you know we're at 35 about thirty-five thousand investors right now um and you know the i think the power that comes from that has the potential to be enormous before i get to my next question uh i want to ask you how many titles feature let's let's just focus on feature films how many feature films are under the Legion M logo right now? Uh, that's a great question. I would say that there's probably about 10, eight or 10 that we have been involved with in some capacity. And I, I, I just want to be clear. In some cases, it's because we've made an investment in that film. And sometimes, you know, especially the early ones, it was a relatively small investment. So Colossal uh, was our yeah. first film that has starred, uh, and, uh, sorry, Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis, and is an amazing movie. Oh, yeah. um, we had nothing to do with producing that movie. We 
saw the movie. We we were fortunate enough to be asked by Neon, right, the distributor, right? The people that brought mm -hmm. us Parasites yeah. and I, Tanya and Colossal was literally their first film as a distribution company. They invited us to join them in the release of it. And we made a small investment in the release of that project. And we were just thrilled because it was such a great representation of what we thought that Legion M represented. So, so you're part of the distribution side. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and working on release, we organized meetups. Um, we, we worked with Fawn Davis, who's an amazing special effects creator to create some colossal like masks that uh, we had two of them, one in New York and one in LA that would go to the meetups. And anyway, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we did a lot of online marketing, uh, for them. And uh, back then the Legion was literally about 3000 people. Yeah. And so, you know, we were just kind of cutting our teeth, but that's where we started. Started. Take that all the way up to today. Uh, we just wrapped uh, photography. Um, in fact, actually, we're just getting our first rough cut in of a movie called The Man in the White Van, okay. which is a true crime thriller. Uh, it stars Sean Astin and Breck Basinger, Ali Larder, Madison Wolf. And it's literally the story of, uh, of a young girl who's being, you know, harassed and followed by a, a serial killer in a white van. And it's, it's all, it's all based on a true story that is actually the origin of kind of the man in the white van trope, um, that, that we all hear about. And so in that case, that movie completely exists because of Legion M. We helped develop the script uh, with the screenwriter and director, Warren Skeels. Uh, the financing for that film is provided by a third party, uh, Garrison Films, that financed uh, the entire thing. And we, you know, Terry Luberoff, our head of content, the one I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, she was on set in Shreveport, Louisiana for almost three months producing the film. And so you know, that, that's kind of the trajectory that we've been on. In, in, you know, in between those two endpoints, there's been, like I said, maybe another seven or nine other films that, that you know, ranging from Kevin Smith's Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Uh, we worked with Searchlight for Tolkien. We worked with uh, the film that I mentioned that we bought at Sundance mm -hmm. was um, Memory of the Origins of Alien, which is a documentary about, about Alien, an yeah. amazing documentary. Um, you know, and so we've, we've had a lot, we worked with Dean Devlin on Bad Samaritan. Yeah. Um, now is Legion M's uh, eventual goal to, without any outside help, um, within reason, obviously, but to do a film under your own finance production under the Legion M banner being the main production company. Is that something that you guys are going for? Or do you want to be like what is going on now with many other contributing companies, whether it's developing screenplays, helping out with production or whatnot? Is your goal to eventually start uh, when the money gets there to start putting out Legion M productions to the people? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think ultimately, yeah, like, uh, you know, that's the most powerful position to be in. When you've got the money to finance films, um, then you can kind of write your own tickets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, until then, uh, we've raised a total of a little over $15 million as a company, which is- Is that from the fan uh, investments? Yes. Yeah. All entirely from fans. It's about uh, 30, 35,000 uh, fans. Nice. And so that's a lot of money, except when it comes to Hollywood, right? It like it goes $50 very million quickly. Dollars, it goes yeah, very is, quickly. is not that much when you're talking about um, film budgets. And no. so we have been very strategic in how we bring those assets to bear. And so, for example, we've made investments in films where we are, we helped finance uh, Mandy, uh, great example, Nicolas Cage, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we partnered with SpectraVision. We provided equity finance that was specifically used to um, finance the soundtrack by Johan Johansson, which is an mm -hmm. amazing part of that movie. Oh, and yeah. unfortunately, sadly, one of uh, Johan's last works before he passed away. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
So we do do that, but you know, to be honest, um, we we recently I, I mentioned the fact that we recently produced this film uh, based entirely on third party finance. Uh, we also just sold our first series to a streamer, which is a huge step for us. Uh, we believe it's a huge inflection point at the company because if you look at Hollywood, the number of people that have projects that they'd love to sell to a streamer is this big. The number of people that have actually been able to sell something to a streamer is much smaller. And the fact that we were able to to sell this series, uh, we can't say who it is uh, mm -hmm. or what it is yet because of uh, all the NDAs. It's expected to come out in 2023. Um, I can say that like it's a it's a name brand streamer. It's somebody that you know. Yeah. And um, um, so so I think that to answer your question, we're, we're we are looking for ways to harness the power of fandom. That's what makes us unique. That's what separates us from every other production company out there is that we're the only one that's owned by 35,000 fans. So we're always looking for ways that we can harness the power of that to improve our odds, to put our finger on the scale and make things more successful. And so, you know, like I said, we've been involved with literally every aspect, you know, from development to marketing and release of the cycle. And I expect that we'll continue to do that and continue to explore and just find new ways that we can harness the power of, uh, of fans. That is excellent. Uh, so obviously in entertainment, what's really needed is, it's the people you know and the connections that you build along the way. I've been doing this just shy of two years and I have made hundreds of connections from network executives to filmmakers, actors. It's been such an amazing experience. Uh, so the connections that you make along the way really matter. Uh, would you say Legion M has made some pretty solid connections in terms of financing. So if you guys develop an idea, you somebody you find a script that you guys really believe in, you have your set of people that you can turn to to try to get something financed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've made a lot of great connections. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, um, I mean, it depends. The, the model is a little bit different, obviously, for television uh, than it is for um, uh, than it is for for feature films. But you know, we when we started this company six years ago, uh, it was really just an idea and mm -hmm. this this concept. And, um, you know, Paul and I had, because of Moby TV, that's the company where we put live TV on cell phones, uh, we had to license and distribute networks. Um, and we actually created some of our own channels, uh, which meant dealing directly with uh, content producers. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, you know, we came to Hollywood with not particularly strong network of connections uh, when it comes to uh, things that are important, like financiers, uh, showrunners, directors, uh, talent, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, since then, we've compiled an amazing advisory board. Uh, mm -hmm. Dean Devlin, who was the, you know, he was the creator of Stargate and Independence yep. Day. Um, so literally a billion dollar producer, uh, Michael Uslin, who produced the, all the Batman movies starting back in 1989. Mm -hmm. um, he produced, um, uh, he's somebody that we've worked closely with. Um, William Shatner just joined our advisory board, when, nice. which was a huge, um, you know, wonderful story. Uh, we, we met him, we literally met him at a Comic Con. And uh, we were we were pursuing we were interested in talking to him about a project that we had, and um, he um, uh, he he politely heard us out on the project. He ultimately had to pass because he had um, a conflict with another project that he was doing. But when we told him this idea of a fandom company, he was like, "That's genius!" And mm -hmm. so you know we had a couple other calls, and the next thing we know. He joined uh, our advisory board. Nice. So I, I, I feel like that's been a huge, again, that's one of the powers 
of being fan owned is, you know, it, it literally opens doors for us. Yeah. You know, if you look back, one of our very first advisors of the company uh, was Stan Lee. And we did a couple projects with Stan Lee and Kevin Smith. This was back when the Legion was only a couple thousand people. Wow. We had no money. We had no reputations in Hollywood. But Stan and Kevin, who are both people that understand the power of fans, they dug what we're doing. And so it's fundamentally different when you go to someone like Stan Lee or William Shatner that literally has their pick of whatever project they want to do. And, you know, if, if I went to them, if Paul and I went to them and we're like, hey, we've got this project for you and we're all going to make so much money and you're going to make so much money. And that's great. Um, you know, versus us coming to him saying we represent 35,000 fans that have pulled their money because we want to make this project happen. Yeah. Like it just, it's, it, 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 we bat way out of our league <laughs> when it comes to uh, uh, getting close to people. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're six years in, um, I think that our network is growing and expanding. Every project that we do is a stepping stone to the next. Again, I feel like that's one of the things that's really important is, um, uh, you know, you've got to build over time, when you start with a startup, you literally have nothing. And, you know, you know, we want to produce, you ask, like, do we want to fight? Of course. Yeah. We want to finance hundred million dollar films mm -hmm. and, you know, be able to release them, but you, you don't start with that. You know, no. we started back when we had 3000 people, I mentioned Colossal. Part of the reason why that me that movie was so important for us is because at the time we had just raised a million dollars on this idea, this crazy idea of a fan owned company. And, you know, but people were like, a million dollars is nothing. No. You know, all you're going to be able to do is like super micro budget films. And, you know, and, you know, we're like, no, like, that's not what we want to do. We feel like this can change Hollywood. And so being able to show people Legion M is involved with an Anne Hathaway movie mm -hmm. and, you know, a big budget movie that with critical acclaim that's showing in theaters around the country, like that was really pivotal for us because it allowed us to then build from that. And that's what got us in the door talking to Dean Devlin, you know, and then that's what got us in the door over, you know, the next one. And so it's, it's just about that. It's like, I, I feel like, Hollywood is like, um, you know, a lot of other industries that when we started that company in, in 2000, uh, putting TV on a cell phone, we had no, no you know, no. basis in, in the cell phone industry or, or the television, but you just, you know, you and figure I, it out and you string things together. And I totally understand it because even though we're doing separate things, your guys' path and similar to my path sound very much the same because when I first started this, I was not, I don't have an uncle in Hollywood. I didn't know any, I mean, I was just a fan. And uh, I knew though, that it's about gaining legitimacy. That was what is the most important thing to me. Even I've gained legitimacy uh, in, in the entertainment industry that has been accomplished. But to get there, like you said, for me, it was getting the first guest and then yep. led to the second guest and then it steamrolls and you work day and night to build up your legitimacy proving to the entertainment industry that a <clears throat> you're not some fluke you're not going to embarrass people you're you're serious about the craft you're serious about the industry and then people are going to start taking you seriously and it opens one door opens another and then it opens another and so i totally understand what you just said it's a, that's exactly how hollywood uh works it's about gaining legitimacy and gaining uh re respect with all that being said there are obstacles along the way everybody has to face them and you got to work your way around them you've got to outthink the obstacles that's my motto Whatever mm -hmm. obstacle comes up, you got to outthink the obstacle, okay? Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. obstacles has Legion M had to face that you guys had to really get innovative and try to work around? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think that, uh, like I said, the um, 
our our whole purpose and what we spend our time talking about is how we can harness this power of fandom to you know the power of the legion um to create competitive advantages where none exist and and mm-hmm. i think that you hit the nail on the head and we're you clearly cut from the same cloth yeah. that you're having to do the exact same thing that we're having to do yeah. um in starting from nothing and building to something so that's always the challenge it and so that, the way that we tend to face it at legion m is figuring out like okay well again what makes us different it, we're owned by thirty-five thousand people so perfect example is uh, this this project that we have called Film Scout. Um, so we go to Sundance, uh, where we've been uh, the last two years. It's been virtual, but uh, uh, so for like five years now. And we're the purpose of us going is to find if there are any films that we could get involved with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, um, we uh, a few years ago we developed this product called Film Scout. And if you think about Sundance, it's a really unique challenge because there are literally, generally, over a hundred films playing at Sundance, and a very large number of those may have some sort of distribution rights available, or may be owned by already owned by a distributor that we've got a relationship with, or could have a relationship with, and might be interested in partnering with Legion M on the release of it. And so, you know, but at the same time, you only have a very small group of people where, like I said, we're an eight person company. Mm -hmm. Um, And so even trying to analyze a hundred films and figure out like what 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 film should we even look at, mm-hmm. right? Is a monumental challenge. Keep in mind these are these are brand new films. We, yeah. When we were there with Mandy, we were like I said an equity investor in Mandy, so we were there when it premiered at Sundance, um, and uh, I still remember it. The they flew the final cut of the movie from a editing bay in Belgium to a parking lot, a Starbucks parking lot in Park City to hand it to the projectionist who was going to be playing it at the premiere. So, you know, this, the, these films are brand new. There's no, nobody's seen them. So there's no buzz that you can kind of count on anyway. So ultimately what we decided to do was figure out how we could harness the power of our community. And we created this game called film scout, which is an app. You can download it on your phone on iOS and Android. It allows you from anywhere in the world to log in and see the films that are playing, uh, like I said, the whole thing is gamified and you give us your opinions as to which films you're interested in, as well as your predictions of which films you think will be most successful. So we take all that in as data and your opinions on what you like or dislike. I mean, obviously your opinions are just as valid as my opinions, Mm -hmm. but your predictions as to what's gonna be most successful within the app, that's something that we can grade. So we evaluate all that. At the end, we release a leaderboard that shows you just how good you were at predicting um, and seeing how you stack up with everybody else in the Legion. And then we invite the top 5% of that to join our elite scout program. And these people then help us when we're trying to evaluate new products or new projects because they've shown, they've demonstrated an ability to predict what the broader group will think. And so, you know, that's a, a very unique response to a, you know, to a common problem that any production company would face. And so, you know, we've got that going on in Film Scout. At the same time, we generally have hundreds of Legion M investors that are in Park City, um, or this year, I mean, it was even more because of the fact that it was virtual, that will watch the movies and give us their opinions, uh, also in Film Scout. So at the end of the day, when we're trying to decide what movies we want to focus on, it's not my opinion versus Paul's opinion versus somebody else's. It's we've synthesized thousands of opinions from fans around the world to tell us what are the cluster of movies we're interested in. Then when we want to say like, oh, is that a good movie? You know, how did it work out? We've got hundreds of people that are boots on the ground that can watch the movies, rate and review them. So again, it provides us data to make decisions that another company you know paul and jeff entertainment incorporated would not have and so that's 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 just an example of the way that we tend to view these problems and try and tackle them now film scout the app is it just available to investors or is it open to everybody 
No, it's open to everyone. And that's actually an important thing to know is that um, anybody can join Legion M for free, right? If you, so so you can just go to legionm.com, you can sign up. There's literally no cost or obligation. That allows you to join the Legion. It gets you on our mailing list for all of our events and all of our special, you know, cool things. And we've done some amazing events, not over the past couple of years, of course, because of COVID, but, yeah. you know, we hosted a Stan Lee party and we've, we've had, you know, red carpet premiere and all sorts of amazing um, um, uh, uh, events that we've done. And so you can join that for free. Uh, you know, it's a great way to get to know what Legion M is about. Um, if people want to invest in Legion M, that's wonderful, but that's a private decision. Like, yeah. you know, and, and we feel like there's people out there that maybe can't afford to, or maybe they're just not sure. And so it's wide open. Anybody can join for free and be a part of it. If you just believe in this idea of a fan owned company. And then if you decide that you want to make an investment because you want to own a piece of it, uh, you can do that as well. So to answer your question though, film scout is why is, is available. If you just search Legion and film scout, you could literally download it right now Very on nice. Android, uh, or iOS. Cause we just finished, um, we just finished Sundance and we're just about to launch uh, South by this will be the first year that we've done South by Southwest on film scout. Very nice. Uh, so let's say the fans pick a movie. Let's say it has been picked up for distribution in North America. Uh, and Legion M wants to get involved somehow. So would you guys do something like rent out a theater and do a red carpet uh, premiere uh, how, how would Legion M go about in getting involved uh, and helping out the distributor to get the Legion M name involved into the distribution process? Yeah, it's a great question. So there's two specific cases that I can talk about. Uh, the first one is I mentioned Memory of the Origins of Alien. That's the film that we bought the distribution rights for mm -hmm. uh, at Sundance. And that was all based on Film Scout data. So we partnered with a company called Screen Media and we, you know, pulled our money and 50-50, we bought the North American distribution rights. We own them for the next 20 years. We released it in theaters. Um, it's streaming now on Crackle. Uh, it's available for rent everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've never seen it, it's a wonderful documentary about the cultural impact of um, the movie Alien uh, and the forces that formed it um, mm -hmm. it's, and, and the impact that it had afterwards, as well as, oh, yeah. you know, some of the, the fun stories around the making of it. It's, it's a really thoughtful, smart documentary. It's very highly rated. It's, it's, it's certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and if you're a fan of the film Alien, even if you're not a fan of the film Alien, like it's, it's, a, it, it's a really compelling um, story. And a after you watch it, you, after you watch it, the first thing you're going to want to do is go watch Alien, and then you'll see it in a completely different light. Uh, it's um, one of the classics. Anyway, yeah, no, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was uh, an incredible. So that one, we, we literally bought the distribution rights to. The other um, project that, that ended up coming out of Sundance was Save Yourselves, which is a science fiction comedy from two years ago. Uh, that again, very highly uh, regarded on Rotten Tomatoes. Bleecker Street bought the rights to that at Sundance, but our film scouts had chosen it and it had fared so well that we reached out to Bleecker Street and then we partnered with them on the release. And so we have some upside uh, in that movie for, I wanna say it's the first two or three years uh, of its lifespan. And, you know, we um, we did a bunch of meetups around it. We did a whole merchandise line around it. We um, uh, we did a bunch of online um, stuff with the, the cast and the direct writer director uh, couples and all that sort of stuff. Wow. Wow. That is really it, it's very innovative because, I mean, it's not look like, OK, it's under distribution. Let's move on to the next thing and see what we can do. You guys work with the distributor and find innovative ways to not only get involved and make money, but to promote the movie as well. So I think that's that's really genius uh, on, on all the different approaches that you guys take. Now, if you had to pick between the production and the distribution side, where do you see Legion M in the future heading more towards? more towards production or leaning more into the distribution? 
I think that we'll always have, you know, potentially a foot in, in, in both areas. I can tell you, like, as a company, we're really focused more on development, which is on the production side. So, yeah. um, you know, we're in, uh, after selling this first series uh, to a streamer and having produced uh, this film, and we're really excited for this film to come out because I think it's going to show uh, the chops that we've got in that category it's really opened a lot of doors for us. And as we've looked at it, the, um, you know, the ability to harness the power of a legion of fans to market and promote and release films, I think is pretty obvious to everyone. And, you know, we've, we've kind of established um, a lot of the stuff and done a lot of experiments to see what works and what doesn't work. Um, but where I'm really interested in is figuring out ways that we can harness the power of a community in the development process. And so we've got some really interesting ideas um, for a company that is, again, we've raised $15 million total. So we're not at a point where we can go out and buy any large films yet or mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, but, you know, we've got it, your money kind of, you can make smaller bets on the development side because it doesn't cost that much they're more speculative meaning that the odds of success are you know lower right you know because for every 10 projects you develop probably nine of them will never end up getting made um but every single project that you're involved with it, when it comes to the production side is a swing for the fence yeah. and you're hoping to get a hit you know, or you're hoping to get a franchise, you know, even mm. better or something that, that can lead to something The odds else, are really you know? against you. Yeah, the odds are totally against you. But again, like that's the same thing with the startup. Like we tell people when you invest in Legion M, there's a whole watch before investing video where we talk about the fact that at the end of the day, startups are inherently statistically the most likely outcome of investing in Legion M is that you're going to lose your investment. Oh, yeah. It's because a gamble. most yeah. startups fail. Like yeah. that's just a fact. Yeah. But that doesn't change the fact that the ones that do succeed can go on and change the world. And if you Look were at Netflix. Yeah. If you were smart enough or dumb enough to invest in Netflix back when it was, I mean, I mean, you talking forget about putting when it was DVDs founding. on the, in the mail, you know? Yeah, yeah. Think about when it was floundering, when people were talking about the fact, like streaming to, you know, what? That's never going to work. The studios own all the content. You guys are never going to be able to break through. And they flipped the script, and they are now the largest content producer. They have become the eight hundred pound gorilla in hollywood and which... a lot of people don't remember that when netflix introduced streaming their original lineup i'm sorry i love netflix it sucked yeah no. <laughs> it was I a bunch of thing, b movies it, it totally was and and i what netflix did which was genius at the time was recognized that the only way that they were ever going to be able to be successful was to Pro, was to do their own production and mm -hmm. produce their own. And at the time, I still remember when that seemed like a crazy idea. And you're like, what? They're going to do Netflix original productions? Like, yeah. I don't get it. Like, how does that ROI out? But again, I mean, you know, today. Especially on an SVOD, on a streaming video on demand service where you're getting, you, you need more subscribers. Yeah. And they're sort of, uh, on, I don't know if you follow their, their business reports, their rate of growth slowed down the last quarter and they're being urged by investors to develop deeper into markets like India to expand further out. I mean, they're still growing, but not at the crazy pace they were a year or two ago. Uh, yeah. Because eventually you're going to hit some kind of a ceiling, okay? Yeah. And revenue is going to max out. So you always got to be at least one step ahead of the game and think of what are you going to do to combat that? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I totally agree. And and I don't know what they're, you know, I don't follow them that closely as far as their business stuff. I know they're getting into games. Yeah. You know, we, you know everybody wants to be the Netflix of video games. Yeah. And I think that, that, you know, maybe it'll be Netflix or, you know, there's, there's also, I mean, it, it, it's interesting because, Paul and I, um, when we started uh, Moby TV, and th there was one other guy, um, and you know, back in the days when people 
thought that watching TV on a phone was a was a crazy idea. Mm-hmm. It, it literally was a crazy idea. Like back then, the only back in 2003, you remember the mm-hmm. only place that you watch TV was on a television yeah. and they were all connected to a cable or a satellite dish. There was no such thing as streaming, no. you know, to your computer. And so if you think, and that was just le- less than 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So how much the world has changed since then, how it's, think of all the companies that have come and gone. And, you know, now this next battle is the streaming wars oh, yeah. of all these, you know, myriad of streamers and they'll end up being consolidated. The fact is that's exactly what technology- I too. Yeah, technology technological change is not slowing. It's no. never going to stop. It no. will only continue to accelerate. And business culture and consumer landscape is only going to continue to change. And so I think that one of the things that we've recognized about Legion M is that at the end of the day, the two endpoints of content are the consumer and the creator. Exactly. And everything in between, whether you're watching black and white movies or streaming or virtual reality, or you're buying it in a bundle or you're buying it a la carte, all that sort of stuff are that stuff is going to continue to change forever. Yeah. But the idea of a company owned by the fans, the people on the end point of this, they are always going to be the most important part of this equation because they are they are responsible for every dollar in the entertainment industry. And Absol- so that's why we think that a company owned by fans has the potential to be so revolutionary. Absolutely. Before we go, I just want to talk about one more thing. You mentioned development and how you guys are really big on development. How does that work at Legion M? Do you guys have a set uh, group of writers uh, that you work with to come up with ideas and then you try to sell that to a stream, a huge streaming service, a small streaming service, a network, a studio, and whatnot. Uh, how does the the development work at Legion M? Is it you working with writers, and then Legion M pitches it to whoever is willing to listen? You know, it's kind of all over the map, to be honest. Like we're very opportunistic. Um, I think that a lot of it's, um, you know. To, to develop something, you need to have IP, uh, you need to have the creator, right? Whether it's the showrunner or the director, uh, you need to have talent, right? That's mm-hmm. what you've got to ultimately package up uh, in order to get something financed or to get it sold. And, you know, sometimes you don't need all three of those, but you probably so need- So you need the talent well. already attached, even in the, in the development stage? It, well, I mean, that's- that, 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 what I'm talking about there is really kind of packaging, but ultimately um, that's, that's, that's the way that we look at the picture is trying to develop that total package. And so, you know, um, like I said, you know, you don't necessarily have to have all of those. Um, We sold the, the series that we sold, sold to a streamer did not have talent attached in the form of actors, but it did have uh, a great showrunner and it did have a great piece of IP behind it. And, and that, and that's what allowed us to sell that. For our viewers case, who don't know, IP is intellectual property. Uh, yeah. 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 We live in and, a world of acronyms and I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, no, understand. no. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you doing that. Cause like, it's, it's, uh, it's easy to just kind of start, yeah, you know, yeah. babble speaking, but, uh, Anyway, so for us, um, uh, we're a small company, and so we're constantly looking for ways that we can, you know, get the most efficiency, right? And so, you know, we're not going to be a company generally that's going to take a project on that requires a substantial amount of development work, like traditional development work, like the script needs to be rewritten Mm -hmm. and, you know, our team is going to do that. Or, you know, we might, we might work with a writer to do it, but at the end of the day, we try and probably steer less into those sort of projects than into one where there's an amazing script and we need to connect it with the showrunner and then it's going to be tweaked and, you know, and, and, and evolved and developed uh, in that way. But, you know, we can, you know, turn it around relatively easily and, and pitch it to a, um, 
uh, pitch it to a financier or pitch it to a network or something like that. If you were to guess moving forward, do you you know see both the film industry and the television industry both equally continuing to grow, uh, not one favorite over another? Yeah, well, it's it's interesting. Like when people talk about movies and the in the movie industry, you tend to think about theatrical releases. And but that's changing. Yeah, well, I, I mean, but if you think about it. Um, movies play on Netflix too, right? You know, so like the difference between episodic content and what we traditionally consider television um, and movies is really a little bit more of a difference of format, I think in a lot of cases than it is like fundamentally. But it is interesting because the business models are very different Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of cases. And, you know, theatrical is a route. It is still a thing. Um, I personally am hoping that it continues to be a thing. Like, I'm sure that it will. I mean, we're seeing enough signs with Spider-Man and that sort of stuff. Like, movie theaters are not going away. I think that, you know, it's unfortunate. They've been so hit so hard with by the pandemic, you know, which probably accelerated changes in the shift to online streaming. It probably just accelerated stuff by five years. It caught the studios really off guard. Well, it did. I mean, it caught the world off guard, yeah. but it's, you know, like they were already in trouble because they were fighting, you know, the, the, these, uh, the fact that you can now watch, you know, movies, uh, in, in your living room. Yeah. So I think that, you know, the theatrical industry is, I still think has tough times ahead. Hopefully they're, you know, they're through the worst of it as far as the pandemic goes and they can kind of, you know, get back to where it is. Cause we love theatrical and, you know, I mean, the difference between watching a movie in a theater and watching it in, on your couch is they're fundamental and they're profound. It's the difference between listening to a CD and going to a concert. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. It's an experience. It's not even just about the movie. It's the whole experience of just yeah, going it's the to community. the community. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a collective shared, you know, sort of thing. And so anyway, Absolutely. So we'll see. Jeff, uh, the hour is up, man. You believe that hour just flew by? Oh, uh, I, yeah. Sorry. I no, I loved it. I think <laughs> I think we had a great conversation. Uh, thank you so much for coming on here and sharing Legion M, what they do. Uh, where can people find Legion M on the internet? What's the website? Uh, it's real easy. It's legionm.com. Okay. Uh, you can find us on social media. We're Legion M official across you know, uh, everything. So, uh, yeah, come check it out. Come, you know, like I said, you can join as a member for free. There's no cost or obligation. It's a great way to find out what it's all about, you know, um, and be a part of something. And you guys also, I've read, uh, and when it comes to production of movies, you allow fans to like pick props or stuff like that. Is that, is that true? Like, we do a lot of stuff like that, you know. When, when with the J, with the Jane Silent Bob reboot, we uh, we ar- architected set visits also for Arch Enemy, which was the Joe Manganiello film that we uh, uh, were executive producers on. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the Man in the White Van was shot, you know, uh, last October when COVID was hitting really yeah. hard, and so uh, normally we would have literally opened that up like every day had tours of people coming in because we can and you know getting our investors in all of our all of our round eight investors uh who are investing right now get their name in the credits of that movie yeah. um and since we couldn't bring people actually on set we had a person on set that collected a massive amount of behind the scenes like how you make a movie and interviews with the cast and the crew and uh we're planning to release all that when we get a little bit closer uh to the film so uh but yeah we're always trying to figure out ways in arch enemy we uh the director needed a car uh for the film for the hero of the of the movie to drive and he had an idea in his mind he wanted to have a late model um you know dodge um Dodge Challenger, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he was going to rent one, but we're like, well, hey, why don't we go out to our Legion and see if anybody has one that they want to, you know, be in the movie? Because that's kind of cool. Get your car in the movie. And uh, so we have this submission page for that, as well as like a dozen other things. And we had a whole bunch of submissions and the director ended up finding a car that was not at all what he was looking for, but was way better. It's like a 70s era El Camino wow. and uh, was just perfect for the role. So he literally cast that car. And so the, the guy who owns that car, um, who was a mechanic, 
came out and, you know, wrangled the car on set for, I think it was probably three or four days or maybe a week of shoot, you know, it, you mm-hmm. know, for the, the scenes that the car was in. And it actually ended up completely changing traje- the trajectory of his life because he loved it so much. And now that he had gotten a foot in the door and made some connections, he was able to get some other gigs. And he is now like, that's what he does. He does car wrangling. He's doing, he's learning stunts because he wants to do stunts. That uh, is when awesome. we did, yeah. When we did the man in the white van, he was the one that I, you know, we had a very specific, we need a 1973 Ford Econoline van. And, you know, it's not the easiest thing to find, but he, found one and you know it needed some work done to it and you know both aesthetic and mechanical and he managed all that and he came out and was on set um you know as a paid crew member as the wrangler of the car and so yeah we work really hard to try and like i said open the gates of hollywood and figure out how to let people in that's awesome jeff thank you so much for coming on here and sharing all thank you for having me this has been a lot of fun it has been a lot of fun thank you to our viewers for watching this live and those who will watch this later on on behalf of co-founder Jeff Anderson and Paul Scanlon, who is not here, but we'll in, let's include him as well. Stay safe and stay walking, guys. Good night.